Now here's something I'd wanted to have for a while. I wanted to find one of these for a while. The only trouble is, every time I did, they're always too expensive. This is actually a blower motor and a blower assembly taken out of an old furnace. And um, found two guys selling this thing at a flea market a couple of days ago. And I asked them what they wanted for it, and they said $10 would buy it. $10 did buy it. And for the most part, you know, it doesn't look like much, but it is mechanically sound. It runs well. The motor seems to be in good shape. But the wiring on it leaves a little bit to the imagination. Looks like it's been left out in the weather. There's rust inside that wiring box there. Somebody took the ground pin off the plug, which is never a good idea. Anyway, it definitely does run. But I'm going to go ahead and rewire it for your viewing pleasure today with a much nicer, much longer cord. But here's how it runs. It really moves a lot of air, too. One of the first things we need to do in the quest to rewire this motor with a new, longer, better cord is to clean up some of these terminals in here because none of these terminals are particularly clean. I pulled this, uh, this goes to the insides of the motor, and I pulled this off so that you could see how rusty that really is in there. Now I need to clean that up. I've got a sheet of sandpaper somewhere around here that I'm going to try to clamp between the jaws of these pliers and slide back and forth on that terminal to clean it up. I'm also going to clean up some of the other terminals in here, including the ones going to the uh, the start and run capacitor. Okay, so here's the problem. Even after taking this motor's back panel off and exposing all the contacts and wiring, it's still pretty hard to get at these terminals and give them the kind of cleaning that they need. Now, I had hoped that the keykeeper would have a um, points file that I could use to get in there because some of those spaces are kind of tight, but it turns out that he didn't, and so the things that I do when the keykeeper hasn't got the tools I need. Here I've got, I'm going to make something here, here I have a set of popsicle sticks and some sandpaper and a pair of scissors and then over here I have my glue gun warming up. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some sanding sticks, some very quick and dirty and cheap sanding sticks so I can get at those terminals and clean them off. And there is an impromptu sanding stick suitable for use with those motor contacts. Okay, now I've got all those terminals back together so it's at least starting to look like a motor again. Now to try and replace some of these worn out connectors. I couldn't get, uh, turns out the ones that I originally selected were of too, too thick of a wire gauge. So I had to get some smaller ones and unfortunately it seems I couldn't get those at an angle and I couldn't get them insulated. So what I've got here is heat shrink tubing and for the first time in my life I had to buy a lighter. Never needed one before but now I do. So I'm going to give this a try and see what happens. It should be interesting. Alright, there's everything in the motor hooked up again. Hopefully the way it should be. There are only two things that I was unsure about. And that was the position of the two black wires, but I'm not sure that's going to be a huge deal. And if I do get it wrong, the motor shouldn't, simply shouldn't run. Also cleaned off the bearing because I was sanding back there, and we wouldn't want any grit in that rear bearing because that'll chew it right straight up. Now, it's time to put the plug on the other end of all this cord here. And then it'll be time to give it a test and see what happens. Okay, so my improvements to this fan setup are finally complete. This motor was being troublesome about starting. I wanted to sit there and hum and it wouldn't start without help. And I do think that this starting cap could probably stand to be replaced. Because if I'm reading that right down there, that says 8342. And I would take that to mean the 42nd week of the year 1983. So it's probably started this little motor a lot of times in its life. But I found even more rusty contacts and rusty surfaces for electrical flow when I took this motor even further apart than I had. In particular, one of the things that I had to address on this motor or felt that was a significant problem 
was the uh, switch. There is a centrifugal switch in most of these motors that when they start to get up to enough speed, it kicks them off the starting winding because the starting winding is often not stout enough to withstand the load of running continuously, which is why if one of these little motors is humming and can't start, you don't want to leave it plugged in because it might very well burn itself out. Anyway, that little terminal, there's a ring that when the motor gets up to speed, centrifugal force thrusts it out and it throws a switch back here in the back of the motor and near this contact block and then that takes the motor onto the run winding which can stand to operate continuously anyway that little switch was particularly rusty and nasty looking so I sanded it off so that its contacts are clean and then I treated it with a little bit of oxidation guard to try and keep it nice for most of the foreseeable future and I'll also keep this thing indoors so it doesn't get rusty quite so quick so now, I've got my nice new wiring all finished. We have 30 feet of electrical cord on this. That's enough to take it a pretty fair ways. Anyway, now I've got it all fixed up. It seems to be starting much more reliably and running well. Here, I'm going to plug it in. And the little motor kicks right off. There's a ton of air. And I guarantee you it's running happier than it probably has in a long, long time. As much rust and neglect was in that little motor. It's not running near as hot as it was either. So that's the story behind rewiring this furnace fan, and hopefully I'll have it for many years to come.